Good morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. We're glad to have each and every one of you on this beautiful Sunday morning as we gather together as God's wonderful people. We gather together to lift up the name of Jesus Christ, that name that's above all names. We gather together as God's wonderful people today to reach out to one another, to pray for one another, to lift up one another, to make that difference in one another's lives. We gather this morning as God's wonderful people to make a difference in the community in which we live. We hear the cry of those around about us and we reach out in love to make that difference. We gather together today to worship. Hymn number 707, the hymn of promise. As we go to the Lord in prayer, we want to remember those that are sick, those that are shut in, those in the nursing homes. We ask the Lord to be with each and every one of them. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, as we come before your throne of grace today, Heavenly Father, we thank you for the privilege we have to serve you and to be a part of your great and wonderful kingdom. Heavenly Father, you have called each and every one of us for a purpose. Heavenly Father, may we hear from you. Heavenly Father, that we might take that purpose into the world and make that difference in the lives of those around about us. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your great, great love that you have towards each and every one of your precious children. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you are concerned about each and every one of us. Heavenly Father, thank you for your mercy and for your grace that makes it all possible for us to have eternal life. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the hope that is found in your Son, Jesus Christ, as he gave himself on Calvary's cross for each and every one of us, that he was willing to carry out the purpose in which he was called. Heavenly Father, thank you for that eternal life that is found in your Son, Jesus Christ. And Heavenly Father, we thank you for that precious Holy Spirit that comes to live and dwells in our hearts to guide us and direct us and help us 
to be the light in the midst of the darkness, that the darkness will never comprehend that light. Heavenly Father, we pray for all those that need your touch today. Lord, you know each and every one of them, and Lord, you know what they're going through. We just ask for your touch. And Heavenly Father, these precious lives that are gathered here today, Heavenly Father, you know each and every one of our hearts. And Lord, you know what each and every one of us are going through. Lord, we just ask for your touch. As you meet our needs, we give you the praise and the glory. Thank you for the prayer that your son Jesus Christ prayed on many occasions. We pray this morning as your children, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Hymn number 365, Grace Greater Than Our Sin.
Psalter reading is found on page 761 as we read from Psalm 29. Ascribe to the Lord, O heavenly beings, ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory of his name. Worship the Lord in holy splendor. For the voice of the Lord is upon the waters, the God of glory thunders, the Lord upon many waters. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is full of majesty. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedars. The Lord breaks the cedars of Lebanon. The Lord make Lebanon to skip like a calf and Saron like a young wild ox. The voice of the Lord flashes forth flames of fire. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord makes the oaks to whirl and strips the forest bare. And in his temple all cry the glory. The Lord sits enthroned over the flood. The Lord sits enthroned as ruler forever. May the Lord give strength to his people. May the Lord bless his people with peace. Remember this afternoon at four o'clock, we will have our administrative council meeting. Uh, we would like to talk about the proposal that the conference, the bishop and the district superintendents and some of the other members of the church has offered a proposal for the churches to be able to leave. Uh, as I said last Sunday, I don't think it's a very good proposal but we need to take a look at it. We need to decide uh, what we want to do. And as uh, far as myself, I probably will uh, stay until the general conference of 2024, and then we will make our decision about what I will do. But you are the church, and you are the people, and so you all make that decision. But we take a look at the proposal and, and see where you want to go. And so I will lead you in whatever way you decide to go. And so uh, keep that in mind as we gather together uh, to be about the Lord's business. The gospel of Jesus Christ will be preached in this church as long as I'm here. His word is what we stand on, his truth. And so that's why we gather together today as God's people to continue to lift up the name of Jesus Christ that hearts and lives might be changed, that they might come to know the Lord Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, that the light will come, and when we become the light, then the darkness cannot comprehend that light that shines in the midst of the church in the midst of the lives of each and every one of us. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the privilege to serve you. And we thank you for the privilege to be able to stand before your people and fulfill that purpose for which you have called us. Heavenly Father, we thank you for each and every gift that's been given this day. Heavenly Father, may those gifts be used for the uplifting of your kingdom. And Heavenly Father, we thank you for each and every one of those that continue to give week after week in order that we might make that difference in this community. Heavenly Father, bless them a hundredfold. For we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Would you stand for the doxology?
Gospel of Matthew, the third chapter, beginning with verse 13. Then come Jesus from Galilee to Jordan unto John to be baptized of him. But John forbade him, saying, I have need to be baptized of thee, and cometh thou to me. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Suffer it to be so now, for thus it becomes us to fulfill all righteousness. Then he suffered him. And Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straightway out of the water. And lo, the heavens were open unto him. And he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting upon him. And lo, a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. The word of God for the people of God. Thank you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this scripture this morning and for the message that you have given unto me as I break the bread of life and to your wonderful people. 
Heavenly Father, may every word that flow from my lips be pleasing unto you. And Heavenly Father, these your precious children who have come today to hear the bread of life. Heavenly Father, may their hearts and meditation thereof be pleasing unto you. Heavenly Father, anoint every word that is spoken and every word that is received. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Our subject this morning is God pleased with you. We could ask the question, is God pleased with us? But as we stand before the judgment of God, when he calls his people together, we will answer as individuals. And so I ask this morning, is God pleased with you? Jesus begins his ministry at around the age of 30. And he comes from Galilee into the Jordan Valley where he asked John to baptize him. And it is John who says that I'm not even worthy to loose the lackets of his shoes. Yet Jesus asked him to baptize him and John to fulfill the scriptures baptizes Jesus there in the Jordan River. And when Jesus comes up out of the water, the heavens open up and the Spirit of God lies upon him and a dove, and a voice speaks from heaven and says, This is my beloved Son, in him I am well pleased. Now, is Jesus ple- is God pleased with Jesus from the time that he was born in Bethlehem of Judea? until the time he begins his ministry there in the Jordan Valley. All we know about Jesus is that at the age of 12 or 13, he made his way to the temple with his family, and he stayed there an extra day, and the family had to come back and get him. And then he went home with them, and he grew and wisdom and stature. I believe that God is pleased with Jesus because after his baptism, he had no sin, but he was baptized so that he could identify with each and every one of us, so that we could identify with him. And it was there that he would begin the purpose in which God had called him, in which God had sent him into the world to do. And that was to offer up himself as that perfect sacrifice on Calvary's cross that each and every one of our sins would be forgiven. And Jesus begins that day as he is led by the Spirit into the wilderness. And the Spirit brings him through those 40 days in the wilderness. And Jesus begins to carry out the purpose that God has sent him into the world to do. He calls his disciples from all walks of life, and he teaches them the love of God the compassion of God, and he teaches them the good news of the gospel, that the lame will walk, the blind will see, the captives will be set free, the gospel will be proclaimed to the poor. And Jesus Christ 
leads his disciples and they learn about God. But then the time comes when Jesus must fulfill that purpose in which God sent him into the world. And so Jesus Christ takes his disciples to Caesarea Philippi. And from there he says to them, I must go to Jerusalem and I will suffer and I will die and on the third day I will rise again. Jesus was determined to carry out the purpose in which God sent him into the world to do. Jesus would take four of his disciples up on the mount, Peter, James, and John, three of them, up on the mountain of transfiguration that they would see the glory of God. And he brought them off of the mountain. And there he said to his disciples, I must go to Jerusalem and I will suffer and die and on the third day I will rise again. Jesus made his way to Jerusalem and Jesus Christ went and offered up himself on the cross at Calvary. And there he shed his blood that our sins might be forgiven, that that sin debt would be paid and God's grace would be ushered in. And Jesus would hang on the cross and say, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. And he would say, it is finished. Jesus Christ completed his purpose on this earth to die for you and for me that our sins might be forgiven. And God could look at him and say, this is my beloved son and him I am well pleased. What about this morning can God look down upon each and every one of us and say, you are my beloved child. I am well pleased with you. I believe that it begins when we confess our sins and we believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and that we believe he rose the third day, that the gift of salvation comes to us and we are filled with the Spirit of God, that we can carry out the purpose in which God has called each and every one of us to do. It is then in our baptism that we begin to say to the world who we are that we are children of God and that we want to do his will and we want to do his purpose and we want to make a difference in the world in which we live. Yesterday we had the privilege to go to Greenwood, to the Catholic Church there in Greenwood to see our great-granddaughter baptized. Now in the Catholic Church they use a lot of symbolism but I believe it says a lot about baptism and who we are. For when they first took her they sprinkled her and the priest said her original sins are forgiven when you and I believe that Jesus Christ died for us and we confess our sins, that original sin is forgiven. But the sin nature continues to live in each and every one of our lives. And that's why we need the Holy Spirit to keep that sin nature 
in line so that you and I can carry out the purpose in which God has called each and every one of us to do. And so they then took an oil and anointed her with the gift of salvation. When you and I confess our sins and believe in Jesus Christ as the Son of God and believe that He rose the third day, then we receive the gift of salvation. It's a gift. It's a gift from God. It's a gift because Christ Jesus was willing to go to the cross and usher in the covenant of grace. And so we were given that gift of salvation. And then they took her to the pool, the baptism pool, and they held her over the pool and they poured over her head three different times, standing for God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. We also believe in the Trinity. We believe in the Holy Spirit that comes to live and dwell in our hearts when we accept Jesus Christ. We believe that Holy Spirit is still with us today and it will continue to guide us through life. And then they anointed her with an oil with spices that she becomes a sacrifice to God as Jesus Christ sacrificed himself for us. And folks, that's what we do in our baptism. And that's what happens when we confess Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. We offer ourselves up as a sacrifice to him so that you and I can carry out the purpose in which God has called each and every one of us to do. I never thought about it in that way. But that's what happens. We become a sacrifice. We offer up ourselves as a sacrifice so that you and I can carry out the will of God so that the Holy Spirit can work within each and every one of our lives, that the Holy Spirit can guide us and direct us in all the ways that he would have us to go. Not the way you and I want to go, but the way that the Spirit would want us to go. The Spirit's not going to make us go somewhere we don't want to go, but the Spirit will guide us. And then they lit a candle and then they took a small candle and lit it from the big candle as Emily became the light of the world. When you and I believe in Jesus Christ and confess our sins, we become the light of the world. And that light shines in each and every one of our lives. And when each and every one of us allow that light of Christ to shine in our lives, then the darkness can never comprehend that light. And the darkness will never reach that child because each and every one of us walk in the light as Christ is in the light. We have fellowship one with another and the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all our sins. And so we become that light so that evil and bitterness and hatred has no place in the world in which we live. And so we maintain that light in the midst of the darkness. And so I ask you this morning, is God pleased with you? God doesn't call each and every one of us to be a minister. He calls some to be preachers, some to be ministers, some to be missionaries. He calls others to be teachers. He calls others to be doctors, and he calls people from all walks of life. But it, no matter what he calls us for, he gives us a purpose, and that purpose is to be that light in the midst of the darkness wherever we are at. 
this morning, are we carrying out that purpose in which God has called us so that we might reach one life at a time? That we might change one life at a time? That the light might shine in the midst of the darkness. We gather as God's people because he has called us for a purpose that we might make that difference. And wherever he leads us, we will follow. Whatever he asks us to do, we will do. Hymn number 338. The first and last verses we sing together where he leads. Father, we thank you for the privilege we have to serve you. You called each and every one of us and gave us a purpose in this life. Heavenly Father, may we go forth to carry out that purpose that the light of Christ might shine in the world in which we live, that the darkness cannot comprehend that light. Heavenly Father, well with your spirit in each and every one of our lives as you guide us during these days. Heavenly Father, we ask it all in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.